Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 18th, and right now we're looking at the infrared satellite imagery. You can see BC, Washington, Oregon. Check out all the cold air spilling off of Alaska, across the Aleutians, out over the Pacific Ocean, driving this frontal system towards our region here. It's slow moving, it is weakening as it gets closer, but it will bring an end to our warm weather here as we go through Sunday on in through Monday. We'll also take a look at the extended forecast. It looks like we're going to remain active across the Pacific Northwest. We start to get some systems moving out of the northwest towards the region coming up here now looking at this, this is something i brought up yesterday you can see this is the hawaiian islands there's australia there's north america and south america here and you see at the end of the loop here that warm water building up off the coast of south america now we restart here at about december 18th you can see that colder water that marks la nina here across the equatorial pacific then you see that warm water start to encroach as it moves across off the coast of South America into the Central Pacific, bringing us out of La Nina conditions here. And we are likely headed towards El Nino as we go through summer and fall. We'll continue to watch this as we go. We don't know how strong that El Nino is going to be just yet. We'll just watch this. We have plenty of time to look at it in the upcoming months. Looking at Seattle yesterday, 62 degrees, 8 degrees above average, still nowhere near the record high but we should be nice and warm again today, breaking that streak that we had for most of the month of March being below average. Look at Seattle National Weather Service going 63 today, 61. And then the cool down comes as we go through next week. But we might get a little bit of a bump here Tuesday, Wednesday for some decent days before some cooler systems arrive at the end of the week. This is current chance of 65 degrees or above across some of uh, southwest Washington down towards Portland. The Willamette Valley you can see Portland 61% chance. So some areas are probably going to get some mid-60 readings down there. Very nice. Get out there and enjoy that while you get the chance. This is National Weather Service Spokane. You can see some decently warm temperatures. We go Saturday, Sunday, but then the cool down starts on Monday as that frontal system makes its way in. Here's the current hazards. Not much to speak of, just some dense fog advisories. Enjoy that while it lasts because it will not last and it will be back later on this week. Coming up, we're going to get some winter weather advisories and bring some much colder air across the region. This is looking at things currently. Actually, it's speed ahead a little bit. This would be about current here. And you can see the frontal system off the coastline. Washington, Oregon, dry today. Nice warm temperature, especially west of the Cascades. And for the lower elevations, eastern Washington, Oregon, frontal system starts to encroach as we go through the day Sunday. you notice the clouds and precip impacting Oregon first. So you might get one more warm day out of this across areas Puget Sound, Western Washington, before this finally takes over the region as we go on in through Monday morning, shown there. And then you can see that energy pivot down the coastline here. We may dry out for a couple days before another system tries to arrive out of the northwest later this week. This is looking up towards 10,000 feet, about 700 millibars here. You can see that cold air over the Gulf of Alaska, over the central USA, kind of the ridge here of the cross Pacific Northwest, bringing us our warm weather. And you'll see this system here as it moves through Sunday. It's not a very strong one, but it will bring some precip and cool us down. Most of that energy moves down through California, but then another nice trough moves across the area as we go through later this week. It's that cold air aloft and another reinforcing shot showing up in the models as we go through the following week here. So it looks like we're going to remain active and cool as we go through the later portions of March. Here we're looking at the Northern Hemisphere. There's Russia, there's Africa over here, there's the Hawaiian Islands, there's North America. If you look at that, these are what we would be known as Rossby waves here. They're irregular, they're, you know, they're not perfect here, but you can kind of see the shape of them. As you see, the red is the warm tropical and subtropical air to the south, and the cooler air lies over the Northern Hemisphere and the North Pole. Put that into motion, and you can see our system start to roll through on Sunday. But again, a lot of that energy moves south into California here, but then we we get some better shots of cold air as we go through later this week coming up and the following week there which is going to keep us cool here across pacific northwest now this is looking at about 2500 foot winds on the left here this on the right is the surface temperature so we put that into motion here we go on in through today there's today's high you can see the nice warm temperatures there Eastern Washington, Oregon getting in the action as well, up in the 60s. We're going to be plentiful across western Washington, Oregon. Kind of that offshore component a little bit across the region. You can see the frontal system out here off the coastline. But then you'll see that pivot towards the Pacific Northwest here. Now we're in late Sunday morning. Tomorrow morning, still get some offshore winds going across western Washington. But the cloud shield is really going to be impacting western Oregon by this time. 
and eventually will spread that cl those clouds and that precip up across western Washington as well as the trough will be open across the area. And then we get that system pinwheeling down across California there and we get a little bit more offshore flow for maybe a day or two there before the next system will try to get in towards Pacific Northwest. And you can clearly see it there by the time we go on in through Thursday and Friday and we definitely cool things down across the region by that point. Now taking a look here, the Seattle Tacoma kind of just showing you the cool down that's coming up here through the end of March. I don't see any really warm days coming up here, but we still could get a couple nice days out of Tuesday and Wednesday. Don't sleep on those days just yet. We may be dry and get some sunshine out of this yet before we cool back down again as we go through later this week. Now, Seattle-Tacoma, this is showing precipitation amounts. Three-tenths of an inch looks like maybe a 24-hour total there. And nothing too crazy showing up here, but it could be the showery nature. It could even get a thunderstorm or two across the region as we go through later this week on into the following week. We'll continue to watch that in a little bit more detail as those systems get closer. This is Portland. You can see the cool down coming for Sunday. And then again, you might get Tuesday, Wednesday. We could get some decent days out of that midweek before we cool back down again. This is looking at the European. So this is an interesting signal off in the extended forecast. The GFS is on the right. The European's on the left. Washington, Oregon. Put it into motion here. And I just want to get out towards, what is this? This is about Thursday night. You can see some convergence zone activity here north of Seattle. And it, it, some chilly air moving in here. It's showing a little bit of flirtation with some lower elevation snowfall. Of course, by the time you get towards the end of March, it's very difficult to make it stick down at sea level. But on the higher hills, you can still make it happen for sure. So we'll just watch that. Some pretty cold air moving in aloft as we go on in through this later this week. So flirting with a little bit of lowland snowfall there. But don't get too excited about that just yet. That is fantasy at this point. This is, again, I've been showing this one. I showed this one yesterday, but this is percent of average precipitation. And Washington's not doing that good. So I I think we're going to be headed back into drought for some areas here across Washington. And Oregon is in some drought currently. But this might not be good for fire season because the Cascades are actually relatively dry right now for this time of year. So it's something worth watching here. You know how fire season can be here and how disruptive it can be. Even in, you know, the fires don't have to be that big. They can just have close proximity and they can really mess with the metro areas and affect a lot of the population here across Pacific Northwest. And this kind of shows that potential here as well. The yellowest drought development likely includes the Cascades and portions of eastern Washington coming up here. So cross your fingers on that. You know, let's hope we don't get the wildfire season isn't too bad coming up here. Six to 10 day temperature outlook. This was issued yesterday through March 27th. The West is bullseye. Yeah. So we're going to remain below average most likely for a lot of this month. Here's the six to 10 day precipitation outlook. We're just slightly in the above average category there. This is eight to 14 day. Again, the West is bullseye eight to 14 day precipitation. This goes through the end of March, kind of the above average signal for California, Oregon there. This was issued yesterday as well. Weeks three to four temperature outlook. Look at Pacific Northwest, first half of April, likely below average coming up here. This is also the same time period there with some above average precipitation chance across Washington, Oregon. That would include BC as well. So yeah, enjoy these nice couple of days, especially for Seattle. You might <clears throat> get a warm day today and tomorrow coming up here, but this clouds are going to affect Western uh, Oregon here a little bit sooner. It's going to bring that system in there a little bit quicker there, but we might get a nice couple of days midweek before we start to really cool down towards the end of the week here. It looks like we'll watch these systems come in one by one. Click like, subscribe. If you guys like a weather station, I'll put it in the link below and go ahead and click on it. Make sure West Coast weather is in the checkout code. I highly recommend it. You know, if you don't want to spend thousands of dollars on a professional setup, it's a really good weather station. The app is really good. It stores all your data for you. It's all solar powered. You don't have to add batteries. It sets itself up, basically. You just place it outside. It's very good. I, I like it a lot. And I will continue to use it. You know, it, it surprised me. I'm an admitted weather station snob. I've worked with some of the most expensive weather stations in the world. And it's very good for an affordable price. So anyway, check that out. If you like, click like, subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow and I'll talk to you guys then.